Holy smokes, what a back and forth affair. I apologize to you guys right away for the late upload every single Monday night. I got uh, indoor baseball training, getting ready for my season to start. Well, not yet, but uh, got to get in the gym and all that kind of stuff, 9 till 11 every single um, every single Monday. So just a heads up to you guys right there. That's why this video is coming out to you guys very late. However, the Leafs get the last punch in the 7-4 victory over the Anaheim Ducks. This is not going to be a game that we're going to be like, yes, let's watch this game and head into the playoffs looking like this. This is the way we want to look down the stretch. Not really, especially defensively. But you know what? They come out with the victory. They get the last punch. Let's break this baby down because there were some nice-looking goals in this game and a lot of small plays that led to big moments, all right? So let's start off with the first thing that happens. The Leafs need to get off to a good start because the game in Boston, they were down early and they just couldn't do anything, really. Barely anything at all. And the Leafs, six minutes in, great play by Jake Gardner to kind of hang on to the puck as long as he could until Nylander was right beside him. Nylander took the puck up to Zach Hyman, up to Austin Matthews, who, it was a weird move. I think, I think Miller thought he was going to cut to the middle of the net. But instead of going to the middle of that, he's like, nope. I mean, it goes around the net and a beautiful wraparound by Austin Matthews beats Ryan Miller to the post. And it is 1-0 Leafs early. That line got shut down and looked atrocious against the Bruins. And they start early with a goal. Matthews' 24th goal of the year. Hyman and Nylander grab assists and it's 1-0 Leafs. And it's 1-0 after 1. However, 43 seconds in, Ryan Getzlaff... Uh, Ryan gets left muscling, muscle, muscling himself to the front of the net and taps a pass Freddie Anderson and it is a 1-1 game. Five minutes after that, Andrew Cogliano trying to get out of the zone. What does Jake Gardner do? Steps up and gives him zero room and causes the turnover. It hits Jake Gardner. And he gets it to William Nylander on a very small breakaway and buries it low glove on Ryan Miller, Nylander's 11th, Jake Gardner with the assist. So in the first two goals, Jake Gardner makes great plays leading to those goals. And the Leafs are up 2-1. Three minutes later, though, Ricard Raquel buries it. I think, was that on the beautiful passing play? I think there was one time here. Uh, they had a gorgeous passing play, whether it was that or, or the or the next one, whatever. They score again, 11-06 into the period, and it's 3-2 Ducks. Now, a lot of the, so a couple of these goals, I'm not going to blame any of our goaltenders. For one, the, the one that McElhaney gave up, yeah, that's one that he should have. That's an awful angle shot, and it found about a yay big hole to... Uh, and when it squeaked in, that was the tying goal to make it 4-4 at one point. Uh, and then the Freddie Anderson, uh, the tic-tac-toe play, I mean, that's just a gorgeous play. You can't blame him on that. Um, but the Leafs battled back. They were down 3-2. And on the power play, Nazem Kadri, it's like a 3-on-2, 4-on-2. Kadri to Mitch Marner. Oh, he's going to pass it right. Heck no! Mitch Marner snipes it! Top glove, and this was a beautiful shot from Mitch Mar This is why you shoot the puck, my man. His 10th goal of the year. Mitch Marner, goal-wise, has been on fire lately. Three goals in his last four. Five in his last, what? Uh, five in his last seven or eight. I mean, every other game. You, you go back to the 20th of, uh, against Ottawa, right? You scored one there. Nothing against Colorado. He scored against Chicago. An assist against Dallas. A goal against the Islanders. Nothing against the Rangers. A goal against Boston. Obviously the greasy one. And then the goal tonight. Mitch Marner shooting the puck a little bit more and getting rewarded. And the Leafs tie the game at three. And you look not even two minutes after that. Jake Gardner, pocket the point, floats it on, tipped enough. By Leo Komarov, and it looked like it was going to go right to Miller's glove, but Leo Komarov's tip, tip kind of directed it more to the post and past the outstretched glove of Ryan Miller. Komarov's fifth, his first goal in 20 games. And Jake Gardner, Nazem Kadri, grab assist on the play, by the way, on Marner's goal, Kadri and JVR grab assist there. And the Leafs have the 4-3 lead. That's great. 
heading into the third period. In that third period, two minutes in, like I said, Ricard Raquel from a god-awful angle beats McElhaney, and we're tied again, 4-4. Oh, it's just it's just one of those games where it's just back and forth and you never know what's going to happen. Less than a minute later, actually over a minute later, Jake Gardner with an absolutely ridiculous pass. And you know what? Th th this is where I, I got to say something about Jake Gardner after I'm done recapping these goals. But uh, just a beautiful pass to Nylander on a breakaway. Where do you think he's going to go? Where did he beat Miller in the first period? Or the, on his first goal in the second period? Low glove. Where do you think he's going this this one? Dang right. Low glove again. Beats him again. 12th of the year. Jake Gardner with the assist. And the Leafs got the 5-4 lead again. However... It's been, I mean, it's been a little bit of a weird game. 5-4, we're, we're not done yet. There's still over, uh, over half a period to play. But the Leafs hang on until just, un, just under, or just over three minutes to play. And just, th this is Kasperi Kapanen, guys. Thank goodness. Kasperi Kapanen busting down the left side. Stops on a dime. Loses his defender. C. Matthews crashing to the net. Fires the puck to him. Matthews kind of kicks it literally to the post. It hits the post, and Matthews just bangs it into the empty net. His second goal of the game, 25th of the year. Capping with a beautiful pass, beautiful play. And the Leafs got the 6-4 lead, and then Hyman into the empty netter. I think I wanna, I think Austin Matthews had a little bit to say after that to, to Hyman. It's like, why didn't you drop it to me? I could have had the hat trick as he was following up Hyman on the play. It doesn't matter. Hyman scores. Brown, Matthews get assists on the play. Leafs win 7-4. And you know what, you look at the last game, and you look at, and you say, Matthews and Nylander and Hyman, they had such a tough night in that game. They couldn't get any momentum going. They had tons of turnovers. Obviously, Matthews leading to the first goal by Bergeron. They needed a rebound game. Austin Matthews, uh, well, okay, William Nylander, two goals and an assist and a plus three. Austin Matthews, two goals, assist, plus five. And Zach Hyman, a goal and an assist, plus four. That line on fuego in this game. Scary part, though, in that second period, Freddie Anderson, uh, you know, Corey Perry coming across the crease and gets a skate in the side of the head. He goes down. No, no Leaf players do anything to protect their goalie except Morgan Riley, who just starts talking uh, smack to Corey, uh, Corey Perry. Uh, anyways, he goes down. He comes out of the game. I think there was no question you were taking him out of the game. You know, concussion spotters are, are seeing that all day. And they're like, yeah, mm -mm, no, come on, you're coming out. And in comes McElhaney. We've seen McElhaney do well before when he comes in. Obviously, Pittsburgh last year in game 81 to win the win the game and uh, get us into the playoffs. Uh, he comes in today. Other than that greasy goal he gave up, a goal on 16 shots. He was fine. But the real concern is Freddie Anderson. I'm hoping it's not too serious. I haven't heard anything post-game from Babcock or anything, any update. He probably wouldn't even give an update anyways. I don't know what the deal is there. But before we get off this video, and, and I'll leave you guys with this. Over the last season and a half, as long as I've been doing these Leaf videos on this channel, I have been giving Jake Gardner grief. And, I mean, arguably so. I mean, you know, rightfully so. He, I mean, he had a lot of points last year in a great plus minus, but he looked clueless out there. The first half of this season, he or first like 20, 30 games of the season, he's doing that but not putting up the points and he was a minus player. And we're like, that's what we were expecting to see last year. But since Morgan Riley went down, and even a couple games before that, Jake Gardner has looked incredible. I never thought I'd say that. However... I know I say however very loud. Someone commented in the last video. I just realized I do that. Um, anyways, he looked really, really, really good in this game. Jake Gardner, three more assists, 12 assists in nine games uh, for Jake and a plus three in this game. You add the, the assist. I mean, we saw how low his point total was uh, earlier in the season, and he was, he was a minus player. He's a plus four now with 33 points. Jake Gardner has put together a very, very good stretch. And the defense overall, I understand they didn't have the greatest night, uh, you know, statistically. But they got it. They got the job done offensively. They made their chances count. Yeah, other players do their job and did an unbelievable job. And it was great to see this team come up with a victory. Five wins in the last six games. Look, I understand that tough loss against the Bruins could be a first-round matchup. 
a seven game series is a long time. One game in the regular season losing 4-1 doesn't mean much. It's what you do down the stretch into the playoffs and in the playoffs. All right, so you know what, guys, that is gonna do it for this one. That I hope if you guys if you guys enjoyed this video and you guys enjoyed this game because it was a back and forth mayhem type of affair. Hit that like button, I do appreciate that. Hit the subscribe button if you guys have not already. Comment down below what you guys think of this game. Who's your one player in the game? Would you give it to Jake? Would you give it to Matthews with two goals and assists, a plus five? Holy smokes! Nylander, Hyman, Marner. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think, and we'll talk to you guys, uh, you know, we'll talk to you guys on, uh, well, tomorrow night, as the Raptors play in one of the biggest games of the season, Raptors-Celtics, at the Air Canada Center, Raptors look to pull within one game of the Celtics, and uh, win their third straight game, and end their winning streak. It's going to be a grinded out type of game, and it is going to be a fun one to watch. Kyrie's probably, Kyrie's probably going to play anyway, so there you go. Um, and we'll all talk to you guys, Leafs edition. That will be Wednesday, as the Leafs are on a little bit of a homestand right now. The Nashville Predators come to the Air Canada Center. A very, very good team in the Western Conference. 32-12-7 on the season. They are playing fantastic hockey. The Leafs have won 5 out of 6. I'm not sure what the deal is with Freddy, whether he'll play or not. There's a day off tomorrow, so we'll have to wait and see. But we'll talk to you guys then, hoping for their second straight win and their sixth win in their last seven games. That's going to be nice, hopefully. We'll talk to you guys then.